Beacon Video presents Evangelist Stanley C. Harris, Jr. Stan was saved in February of 1976 as a result of bus workers out starting a bus route from an independent church in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Nine months later, Stan met Kim in high school, and she was saved in April of 1977, although she was raised a Jehovah's Witness. Stan and Kim both graduated from Bible college and Stan taught on the faculty for five years. They now travel in full-time evangelism and homeschool their four children. The Harris family is an independent, fundamental, soul-winning, separated Baptist family. Brother Stan has been doing karate for the past 25 years. Let's join him now for a karate demonstration. Well, real quick, we're going to break a few boards and bricks and all that. I need one big tough guy, first of all, to check these boards make sure it's real. A big, mean guy with good insurance. Big guy. This guy right here, big guy, come on, big guy. Come on, hurry up. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry. Let's stand right over there. That's good. I think that, and uh, you're going to, okay. Let me just, uh, let me just ask you, how many of you have never seen me do a karate demonstration before? Raise your hand up high. Never seen uh, well, that's your fault. It should have been around. But anyway, no. Okay. Um, a lot of times people think that all karate people meditate to Buddha. Uh, I'm a sixth degree black belt. I'm considered a master. I've been doing this for 24 years, and I've never meditated to Buddha one day in my life. As far as I'm concerned, Buddha's a big old fat man dead in the grave. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, but thank God Jesus didn't die, just die. Three days later, he bodily got up out of the grave. So I, I don't meditate to Buddha. I pray to the Lord Jesus Christ. So I'm going to pray and ask the Lord to keep me safe and our brother safe. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 <laughs> Especially our brother. But anyway, and uh, then we're going to get started. So we're going to pray and ask the Lord to keep us safe. And then we're going to commence. So let's just bow for a quick word of prayer. Father, please now thank you for this time that we can gather together. But I pray for safety, not just for myself, but those who will assist and help me. And Father, most importantly, I pray you'll bless the preaching time to follow. In Jesus' name, all God's people said... All righty, I'm just going to have this fellow check these boards and make sure they're real. You know, you know, Brother Steve, he sometimes jokes around. And he probably took all these boards and uh, broke them and put them together with Elmer's glue. So I want this gentleman to let you know if these boards are real or fake, okay? Now, no, wait a minute. Tough guys don't do it that way now. Tough guys, you got you to gotta look at the audience and give them that tough guy look, okay? You ready? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> are they real? They're real. <laughs> give them a hand there. All right. That's all I need. Thank you very much. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I uh, actually a youth group paid me to do that, but uh, anyway, I uh, I was at one place and I, I said I need a volunteer, and a young lady raised her hand and said, "Ooh, ooh, me, me," and I said, "No, I need a fellow." She said, "Oh, please, please, please." I mean, she was really excited, you know. And I said, "Well, well I, I need a fellow," and she said, "They always use fellows around here," and I said, "Well, okay, Miss ERA, come on, you know." And she came up and I whispered in her ear. I said, "I'm gonna hit you in the head with these boards." Man, she put her hands on her hips and shook her head and said, you better get one of those boys instead. <laughs> so I, I'm glad I got a man that can handle it, amen? All right, I'm going to try this with a speed break. Now, the first time I tried this, I had just one board, and I was in Little Church. And uh, a speed break, what you're going to do is you drop it and you break it in midair. By the way, in karate, we always yell. And somebody said, what do you guys always yell for? It hurts, stupid. What do you think? You know, but... <laughs> No, but uh, that yell is called a uh, Kia, all right? And uh, on the count of three fact of the matter, I'm going to have everybody try in just a minute. But, you know, scientists say you can increase your strength capacity by 10% just by yelling, okay? And you've probably seen weightlifters, you know, uh, you know, you, Brother Steve gets down and lifts weights, you know. Argh! Or, you know, some guy arm wrestling. Argh! Or your mom when she gets mad. <laughs> but anyway, but... Uh, <laughs> anyway, but uh, it's okay. Settle down, fellas. Settle down. But anyway... In karate, we call it a kia, okay? So on the count of three, I'll use that in a minute. In a count of three, I want everybody to give a big, loud yell. I mean, big kia. Now, you don't go from, you don't go, kia! You come from down here, kia! All right? So on the count of three, I want you to realize, one, two, I want to give a big, loud kia. Okay, here we go. Ready? One, two, four! Yeah. You guys retarded, man? <laughs> Brother Steve, these guys. Oh, man, let's try to. Let's try it again. Ready on count three. Ready? One, two and a half. Three. Kia. Now you know enough karate to get killed, so don't try it, okay? So, all right. So in just a minute, I'm going to drop, fact about it, I'm going to do three tonight and uh, attempt three. And I'm going to drop them midair, and then I'm going to yell, and that yell's called a Kia. And then I'm going to chop them, okay? Now, if they break and it, it looks real easy and fine, 
if they don't break, it doesn't look real easy and it's not fine. In fact, like I said, the first time I had one board pointed toward the audience and I had that one board and I dropped it, I went, yeah, pow, that board went flying. <laughs> Little guy sitting out there, ooh, the karate man. <laughs> board came, pow. That's why I'm glad I'm an evangelist. You know, they say about evangelists, we blow in, blow up, and blow out. Well, I left town, but that mama got a hold of that pastor, man. So, so we won't do it till that way, but we'll, we'll, uh, we'll come in the corner and go toward that part of the audience. <laughs> we don't want to go toward the motorcycle anyway, but we'll, we'll, uh, we'll go back that way. Hopefully that beautiful screen. <laughs> oh, yeah. All righty. Give me uh, 10 big weightlifters. Yeah, yeah, big guys like you. Give me... Just come on out, yeah. Yeah, come on. Won't y'all come on up on the platform stand right over here, right over here. And I'm going to let them punch you. You want to move back a little bit so they can see over here. I'm going to let them punch me as hard as they can in the stomach. And I'm supposed to be able to take it, okay? Unless they hit too hard, then I go down, all right? But in the stomach, not the face, okay? I used to let people hit me in my face. My wife says, Stan, you're ugly enough, honey. Please don't do that. So, so we, had to, we had to stop that. So, all right, here we go. So make sure you keep your wrist tight. I, really, now, I've had 46 so far break a wrist or knuckle or sprain something. So just, you know, now you might hit me so hard I fall down. But if not, you know, so make sure you keep yours tight, you know, or whatever. Okay, all right, here we go. Give me. She looks like she's really ready, man. Let's hear it for her. All right. Hey, that was good. Give her a hand. All right. All right. All righty, you young ladies, have a seat. Give them a hand. They did a great job. All righty. We're going to start with the little guy now. Yes, you. I think he thought I was his girlfriend. Let's try again. He wants to try to kick.
so I, you know, I really did have a guy, I put a board in there and I thought the guy saw the, you know, edges sticking out and I guess he was so psyched up, he, he wasn't thinking and he came in and he went, ah! <laughs> and he never did break the board, so, all right, here we go, now, now you're pretty big, so I, I don't want you, don't, you can't, you, you can't use your secret weapon. I, I had a guy like this before. I had a guy like this before, but in fact, he's a little bit bigger than you, hit me. And, you know, I was there, and I thought, since he's so big, I better get extra ready, you know. So I, I really, I really tightened up, you know. This guy came forward, and he came like this, and he stopped, dropped his fist, took his belly, and went, pow! <laughs> Almost knocked me off the platform, man. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> I sure hope these next couple guys can punch, man. I'm, come on. I'm getting tired of these love taps now. Come on now, fellas. This is the last guy. Dynamite comes in small packages, fella. Don't forget that, okay? All right, All right here we go. All right, you guys can have a seat. Thank you very much. I, I don't mean to, I, I don't mean to brag, but I, I just think that I, I'm, I'm the greatest. You know, Muhammad Ali said, "Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee." That's why they call me Stan Lee. You know, and I'm, I'm, I'm bad. I, so, so what? You know, I, 
I want to tell Brother Stan that um, when you make statements like, you know, I am the greatest. But I am, man. Well, wait a minute. See, our, our conference theme is do all to the glory of God. And I invited you in here, man, because last time I saw you do this, you were saying, you know, he's the greatest. And I do it for him, and all of a sudden he stood up here and said, I'm the greatest. I really think somebody could knock him down. No. I really do. Now, I, you know, the, the thing is, here's the problem. Here's the problem. Um, so we can move on with the service. And, you know, I, I don't even know karate. And I'm not, I only have weights once a week. But I think I might just ask the Lord to help me and just hit you myself, man. Because we need, you know, I mean, it's like, no, it's like, you know, I mean, wait, 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 wait. When I, you know, I, I take three steps before my britches move, man. You know, I tease a hair on my legs so my socks will stand up every day. And I don't Bru pump a lot. Of, when I flex, it looks like two bee stings, man. And, but, you know, Bru Steve, I believe the Lord can help me. But, Steve, don't, don't embarrass yourself. With well, these young I got a broken finger and all, but I'm going to pray. I'm going to ask the Lord oh. to help me. You're going to what, we want to know, what we want at this conference is everything we do is to the glory of God, not to the glory of self. Yeah. Amen? I'm going to pray. He's really going. Father, I, I just want you to help me. I love Brother Stan, but I just need to hit him real hard right now. <laughs> I pray you'd give me power to do it, humble him, so he'll give God the glory. Please don't let me get hurt. In Jesus' name, amen. Whoa, wait, 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 wait. No, wait, 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 wait. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Now, now, I've never done this before. But, Brother Steve, I mean, if you're going to... You know, okay, no, no, wait, no, wait, no. Wait, 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 wait. I've never done this before in my life. But why don't we have a contest, okay? I, I'm going to try this. I, I saw one of those guys act like... I, I'm going to try to meditate one time, see if that works. And we're going to see the karate, the karate man and, and Buddha against... Um, well, it's a preacher guy, you know. And well, this I'm not guy, trying you know. to, you know, I'm not trying. Wait, 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 wait. equal yeah. time now. You pray, right? Hold on, hold, hold, hold on, hold on. Okay, all right, hold. Okay, all right. All right, that's it for the Karate Man and Buddha. Yeah. I know you don't want to hear it for the preacher and his well, God. We're gonna try. We're gonna try. Now, wait, 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 wait. I don't want to hurt you, man. From now on, it's to the glory of God. Amen? Oh, say please. <laughs> you know what? I don't think that Buddha stuff works. I say forget stupid Buddha. Let's hear it for Jesus. Amen. All righty. All right. He packs a punch, man. All right, can we have a couple of fellas? I'm just going to break a bunch of boards real quick and I'll be done. Can I have you fellas hold some boards for me and a couple of you guys that, help, a couple of you guys that uh, have karate experience? Sir? Yeah. All righty. Good. That's excellent. Okay, good. And let's have... Uh, All right, thank you. Okay. All right, fellas. Let's do my secret weapon. You know what secret weapon is in karate? Stinky feet, okay? <laughs> if the force doesn't break it, smell will, okay? All right, here we go. Fellas, just hold your arms real locked. If it doesn't break, don't move. I'll come back for seconds, all right? Here we go.
And uh, when I was a little boy, my mama used to call me uh, hard-headed. And then I got married, and my wife said, your mom was right. So let me see if I can put my head uh, through these boards, OK? Yeah, I'll just do three today, one for the Father, one for the Son, and one for the Holy Ghost. And then we'll save this for something else, OK? Now, in karate, we always yell, and that's called a kia, all right? So if you hear me yell, that's a kia. And uh, I'm going to hit those boards and uh, see if we can break them. And uh, I did this in the Bahamas one time. A little boy went home and tried it on his mom's coffee table. It didn't work, okay? All right, here we go. So, let's see here. Let's move this down so we don't blow you out the microphone here. Come up here and come down and bam. Hopefully we won't get a headache. All right, here we go. You ready? Are you ready? Oh, I said, are you ready? All right. Here we go. Psalm 97, 10, the Bible says, he that love the Lord hate evil so it's not enough to love good you have to hate wrong and I don't know about you but I hate the devil amen, amen. sound like you love him I, I said I hate the devil amen, amen. But what I do is I think about the devil and I think about sin and I pretend like these bricks are the devil and sin and I whack them so please don't move it too much we're gonna just give it a try here let's put that down all right here we go <laughs> Okay, I just need three of the smart, smart aleck, uh, toughest cool dudes in this youth conference that think they can do anything. Just jump up here real quick. Three, the first three big, tough, mean, ugly. Oh, my goodness. What are you coming up here for? Okay. All right. I, I better get another one. <laughs> you better give me, give me somebody really big, tough, mean, green. Yeah. Well, I had you. Hey, that no, yeah, big guy. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, you, you, and you too. You too. Okay, that's good. What are you doing? Come on, come on, come up here. We gotta have some blood up here. Come on, man. Come on, come on. <laughs> all righty. Now, one, two, three, four. That's all we can. I just you guys gotta gotta hurry. Okay, real quick. Before you first get started, martial arts, you gotta get your body in shape. So these guys said they wanna help me. We're gonna get our body in shape. We're gonna do push-ups. Now we don't do sissy push-ups. Uh, you know what sissy push-ups are? That's where guys go. <laughs> all right. Uh, we 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 don't do sissy. Push we do men push-ups. And these guys are men, and they're gonna help me do push-ups. And what we do in the martial arts, we, we want to, you know, really get our body in shape so we can do this a little bit easier. So we're going to do them on our knuckles. That helps to build some calluses, you know. And then, and then you know how we fellas like to show off, you know. So there's some young ladies here we want to show off. So we're going to do them on our knuckles on top of the bricks, you know. And you say, well, that hurt? Oh, man, we don't care about pain, man. We're tough, you know. That doesn't bother, right? Doesn't bother us. So, and then what we're going to do is since it's youth conference especially, you know, we, we're really going to show off. We're going to jump every time we do a push-up, pow, land on those bricks. And uh, it'll hurt, probably blood, but hey, no problem. All right, okay. So, fellas, I'll, uh, let me take this off here. I'll, uh, I'll do them first real quick. We got to hurry. And uh, let's see, one, two, three, four. Let, let, give me just a big, five big. Let's just do a 15, okay? We don't get too excited here. Just, just 15. All right. You count. Every time you see me go up and jump, scream for pain, you count. All right, here we go. Ready? Here we go. Can't hear you. Okay, real quick, that's good enough. All right, you first. Hurry, hurry, hurry. No? Come on, big guy. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Real quick. Hurry up, man. All right. No. You want to try? Come on, man, jump. You got to jump, man, like a man. Three. <laughs> well, give him a hand anyway. Come on, man, hurry. Let me sit down now. Sure. Unless you want to try something else. One, two, all the way down. Three, four. Talk to him. Five, six, seven, eight. Come on, looking good, young man. Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Hey, give him a hand. That's good. Next guy. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Go on. These guys are tough, aren't they? One. Two, talk to him. Three, push him, man. The girls are watching. Five. Well, give him a hand anyway. All right. You, 
Let's get, no, no, let's get, let's get the young guy up here. Then we'll get you. Come on, young man, show him how to do it now. Then we'll get to, we'll get you next. Here we go, Betty. You gotta bend your arms down. Yeah, yeah, bend down like that. There you go, now jump. One, two, three, four, five. Come on, six. Talk to him. Push, young man. Come on. Push. Come on. Come on. Talk to him. Come on. 13. Push it. Come on. One more. Come on, man. Push, push, push. Come on, come on, come on. Hey, all right. That's it. Let's go. All right. Hurry, hurry. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Show him how to do it. Ready? Let's go, Matt. <laughs> come on. My time's running out, man. Hurry, hurry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Looking good. Twelve, thirteen. He's got it. Give him a hand. All right. Yes. Now, obviously, th that's the way little kids do it, but these guys aren't little kids. They're teenagers. Teenagers believe more pain, more gain, so we'll do it again. We'll just do ten because, again, time's run out, and uh, you just follow me, okay? Just like this. Okay, there we go. Looks like this. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, who's first here? Big guy. Come on, man. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Hurry, hurry. Come on. Show him how to do it. You gotta go all the way down. That's a half of one. Oh. All right. Give him a hand anyway. That's a good try anyway. Come on, man. Just to make for sure. There you go. Spread your legs a little bit. Spread Well, give him a hand anyway. Who's a man? Come on, man. You don't want to try? Okay. You want to try? Hey, hey, come on. Hurry, man, hurry, hurry, hurry. That's a half of one. Well, give him a hand anyway. It's a good try. Get your knuckles. That's it. You can do it. Let's spread your feet a little bit. Hey, there you go. Well, use your other hand if you want to. There you go. Okay. There you go. Yeah, like that, but kind of. Yeah, one. You got to jump. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Come on, tall. Get back. Okay, sure. He wants to try it again. The brick fell. He's going to try it again. I like a man won't give up. All the way down. What? Well, that's a good try anyway. Give me that wheel. Now, now that's a teenage exercise. Now we're going to do the man's exercise. We'll do one of these. This hurts, and we'll only do one. All you got to do is take this wheel, roll on the ground, roll all the way out, and barely stop. You don't want to go poof like that, okay? And then you yeah, pull back up, all right? I'll show you, all right. I think I'll show you. <laughs> I used to be able to show you. Okay, it looks like this. Just like that. All right, here we go. Big guy. Come on. Give it a try. Hold on tight, buddy. See ya. Oh. Give him a hand. That's a good. I want the other big guy. Come on. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. Okay. Keep your arms tight. You got to keep it out in front of you, okay? And just hold on for dear life. Barely touch your stomach and pull back. All the way. Ooh. Well, give him a hand anyway. There you go, buddy. Hurry, hurry, hurry. This is fun to watch, isn't it? <laughs> All right. You're going for a ride. You didn't touch your stomach, buddy. Well, give him a hand anyway. No, it's you. Tall guy's got a long way to go. Come on. Hold on tight, man. Touch your belly. Ooh. Well, give him a hand anyway. Well, that's a good. You want to try? All right. Just remember, if you go down and hit, you'll bounce right back up. Okay. 
<laughs> well, give a hand anyway. All right. Do you want to try it? One more? Okay. Well, two more. You got, let's go. Hold on tight, buddy. <laughs> yeah, all the way touch your stomach. <laughs> well, give a hand anyway. Next guy. Keep your arms locked. Come on, Matt. You can do it, man. Come on. Talk to Matt. Come on, Matt. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Pull. 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 Talk to him. Come on. Hey. All right. All right. You guys can have a seat. Thank you very much. Here's Alan. Alan came to youth conference, and you know he is a cool dude, you know, and you know how cool dudes have their collars turned up, you know, and show us that cool walk. Now, come on. Show us your bob. Show you know how you guys bob. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Alan came to youth conference, you know, and the preacher was preaching. Brother Steve said, you know, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, and you shouldn't defile your temple. For instance, you shouldn't smoke because that will defile your temple. And Alan said, man, I'm cool. No preacher's going to tell me what to do. And he went out and bought him the biggest, fattest cigar he could find, and we're going to get him to smoke it. Now, since the preacher couldn't teach him how not to smoke, the karate man's going to try. So I've got some friends back there. Uh, there we go. All right, good. Here. Yeah, we got some friends here, and we're going to have you in just a minute. All you're going to do is hold that in your mouth. And I'm going to, shh, I'm going to just barely tap that out of his mouth. Let's see here. Oh, about like this. Okay? Now, now there's no problem. If I miss, this will catch no snot, blood, everything, man. No problem. So you're safe. Okay. So all I want you to do is, let's see, right here so most people can see here, just like that. And just going to hold it in your mouth and, and just lean over a little bit so I don't hit your big chest on the way down. Okay? <laughs> just, hold it. Good. And close your eyes. Don't move. No? <laughs> No, put your hand down. You're ready to Just close your eyes. Shh. Here we go. Quiet now. Right. Got to concentrate. Yeah! Oh, I'm sorry. So, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, man, I shouldn't have done that. I'm, I'm sorry, buddy. I, <laughs> I'm, I really, so, somebody was breathing too loud. Okay, here we go. This. Really, I really did hit a guy one time. I used to break it, I used to break it about an inch from people's lips, and I wasn't thinking. I, this guy came up, and he had a really big Pinocchio-type nose, you know, and, and I hit the cucumber, but I hit something else also, so I, I'm just going to hit it way out the other end, not the one in your mouth, but the other end out there, okay? So this is for real now. So d turn it this way. You, you'll be safer this way. Trust me. Yeah. Okay. Let's turn a little bit better this like this. Good. <laughs> Close your eyes. Quiet, please. Here we go. Quiet, please. Here we go. Raise. Hey, hey, yes, <laughs> Give my hand there. I think. Yeah, okay, you can be seated. Now, I tell you what, that, you stay here. That, man, that was nasty, man. That was mean. I, I'm supposed to be a sixth degree and I'm supposed to be a master. That, that's sloppy. That, now, let's try it again. Here, give, give me that thing. I got another one. No, 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 no. <laughs> there we go. You want to try it again? Oh, man. Yeah, try it again. This time, I'm going to do it nice. And easy. Oh. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's razor sharp. It won't, no problem. It just cut right through you. Yeah. All right? <laughs> no. But this won't make as much mess, okay? So this I time, <laughs> you don't get scared. Just be still because it's coming. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Oh, this way. Good. Shh. Okay, here we go. Ready? Please. <sighs> don't move. <sighs> don't move. Don't move. Ah! You almost lost your fingers, my man. Okay. Hey, don't move. Don't move. Give my hand. That's good enough. All right. All right. What's that? I said one fellow said, Steve, those are going to help me out. Uh, you want to come up here, Steve? Steve's a hardworking man. Let's put this over here. Come on up, Steve. That's good. And you know, the Bible says he giveth his beloved rest. So, brother Steve, you. Come over and take a rest, buddy. You've been working hard, man. You, you, let's see. Well, 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 okay, good. Yeah, I, okay, good. Let me something there. I, yeah. I understand, I understand he, he likes watermelon. Oop, oh. <laughs> so, so, what? <laughs> Sorry about that, buddy. <laughs> what? We're going to, uh, Chopped it off. Now here's, oh, you know what I forgot? I, I did that one time. The guy had a, he, he, I hit the, the watermelon. And I stopped before I hit the guy, but I forgot there was red juice in the watermelon. 
and, and, the guy, and the guy was like, I'm cut, I feel blood. And he looked up and it was red and it was, I said, no, it's watermelon juice. He said, I bleed. And so we'll, I said, we'll, we'll put this down so you won't see it. No, okay. <laughs> so you shouldn't, just one thing. Okay, here we go. Ooh, no, okay. Still, okay. So you just, just hold, keep, keep that back. Yeah, there you go. Okay. No, no, this is, this is, just for a minute. Okay, need you close your eyes. You don't want to see what's going to happen to you, buddy. Because we're going to come up here and cut and stop. Do you want to lose weight real quick? Uh, no. <laughs> All right, real quiet. Here we go. We're going to close your eyes. You don't want to see what's going to happen. <sighs> oh. <laughs> there we go. Come on. I just... I mean, if he can't see, I shouldn't see either, amen? All right. No, no, don't move. Now, I need a fellow, okay, just, I'm gonna make sure I'm on a watermelon, okay? Uh, no, right. okay. Oh. <laughs> okay, is this it, about middle? Is that about middle? Go to your right a little bit. Just a, a little bit? Yeah. Okay, okay. Keep them fingers back, buddy. Okay, quiet now. Is that still about, it don't middle. have to be exactly middle, but is it close? Middle. Okay. That way. Please, quiet now. Seriously, this is, this is dangerous. Okay. Quiet, please. Yeah! Hey, you're still there. I didn't go all the way through. No, let's try that again. I'll make me a new cut. <laughs> okay. I really need y'all to get quiet now, okay? Everything will go fine unless I hit that same cut, then I'm going to go too far. So this is going to be a really precise cut, my brother. If not, it's going to be prime rib, man. Oh, I'm getting close, aren't I? Hey! Get my hand, all righty. You all right, buddy? Come on. All right, thank you. Yeah, just grab this. That's good water. We're having a fruitful good time here, aren't we? Okay. All right. Now, please don't go home and try this stuff. Now I can see some somebody now. I need a fella to help me out, big fella. Yeah, all three guys. Okay. Can we? You can get that cleaned up a little bit. We've got the. Sometimes I get tired. We got some nails here, little fella. You want to walk this? On the, just by the front, let them touch it, see if those are real, okay? I'm gonna lay on those in just a minute, and this big old mean guy is gonna take that sledgehammer and break it off while I lay on the nails. And uh, let's see, you're gonna help pick me up, and then you're gonna help pick me Okay, let's just move those out of the way. Okay, just move those off to the side, these bricks. Hey, 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 hey. I ain't got time now, just try. Okay, before I was a Christian, we used to do this bare chested. Now that I'm a Christian, I believe in being modest, I'll leave my top on. But why don't you, you wanna check my back, make sure there's no, no punch me now, just check it, okay? Just check it out, make sure there's nothing back there. Okay, all right. So we're gonna lay down here. I need to get really quiet, okay? My wife thinks I'm gonna get hurt, and I think she might be right. Okay, all right, just lay it down right there. Okay, well, let's come right in the front of here. There you go, right like that. Okay, you two fellas are gonna stand. Oh, you're gonna hand me that, and then you stay over there. I better take this microphone off. Won't be anything left. Shh. We better pray again. <laughs> yeah, we, let's pray. I'm, Father, help us again and help our brothers swing accurately and keep me safe. In Jesus' name, amen. I prayed for you, buddy. Okay. All right. There we go. Let's move up a little bit. I don't uh, meditate, but I do concentrate. And I'm going to yell. Please. 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 Only one problem, I can't drink anything, it all comes right back out. All right. This is the last thing I'll do, and uh, we got to get moving here. Uh, 
You had a good time so far? Say amen. amen. All right. Man, whoever said Christians can't have fun, I've been having the time of my life. I tell you, I'm glad to be. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's, let me get this out of your way for you. Okay. Now, Psalm 9710, they're getting heavy, aren't they? Okay, it says, Ye that, ye that love the Lord uh, hate evil. So it's not enough to love good, you have to hate wrong. And I don't know about you, but I hate the devil, amen? amen. I said, I hate the devil, amen? amen? And these are shaky. I hope, well, we'll give it the best we got. Okay, we say you want to get on fire for God, amen? I need that towel to sweat, okay? Where's that wet towel? No, the, the, the one you messed up on. Oh, there you go. Thank you. Okay. Shh. Don't, don't tell Brother Robertson what we're doing, okay? Hope there's no firemen around. Okay. We're just going to uh, get on fire for God here in just a second. And then we're going to Okay. Okay, my brother, you got a match? In that bag. Here, here, put the, take that outside the room. Right here. There you go. Let's get ready with our lights, camera, and uh, get that tart ready. Come on, man. Light that thing. Yeah, light it. Sometime today, man. Just drop it. Move back. <laughs> yeah. All the lights. All of them. Okay. Psalm 9710, ye that love the Lord hate evil. So what I do is I think about the devil and I think about sin. I hate the devil, amen? amen. Oh, I said I hate the devil, amen? amen? Man, I think about the devil and I think about sin. And I get real mad. But you like those bricks of the devil and sin. And I jump in and whack them. Somebody said, well, what's the secret? Hit them quick. <laughs> all right. So here we go. Let's take this thing off. And uh, all right. Testing. That's okay. It won't go out. It'll go out after a while. In fact, the matter, it gives me an idea. Somebody in hell is burning right now. Somebody you know that's not saved. Somebody you know that's not born again. Somebody you know that's never been washed in the blood of Christ. Take a good look at these bricks. That's a picture of some of your brothers who have never been saved. It's a picture of somebody's grandmother in this room has never been born again. It's a picture of somebody's aunt, cousin, nephew, niece, neighbor. Never been saved. Burning, not consumed. It's a picture of somebody sitting here in youth conference, never been saved. Listen, uh, I believe perhaps maybe the problem with all the stealing, perhaps is somebody here in youth conference never truly been born again. The problem is not with stealing. The problem is stealing and not coming under conviction. The problem is that you can steal and get away with it, my friend. The Holy Ghost doesn't convict you, and you don't come to a place of repentance where you say, listen, I've done wrong, and I've got to return this. I'm saying, listen, it might just be, my friend, that you've never truly been redeemed. You've probably never truly been reborn again by the Spirit of God. But I'm saying there's some of you sitting in this youth conference and listen, my friend, if you had it your way, you'd sit in the back every session. Some of you love it when you get a chance to sit in the back because you're really not interested, my friend, because there's really nothing inside of your heart that burns for God. Listen, my friend, you're lost and you know it. Oh, you've been playing a church game. You've been playing a Christianity game, but you've never been saved. You've never been born again, my friend. And I hate to tell you, you are on your way, my friend, to a place called hell where the Bible says the worm uh, dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Just a little while, this fire will go out, it's starting to dissipate now. But there's a fire in hell that's still burning. 
First Thessalonians 1 Thessalonians 1.8.9 In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. The Bible says in Revelation, and death and hell were cast in lake of fire and brimstone. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. I'm saying, listen, the Bible says in the wrath, a smoke of their torment is sent up forever and ever. And the Bible says they have no rest day or night, they that worship the beast in his image. The Bible says these shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And listen, my friend, there is a place called hell. And there's a place where some of you young people, listen, you've not been saved and you've been giving your youth director heartache and you've been giving your parents heartache. Oh, you claim to be saved, but you've never truly repented. You've never truly been born again. You know there's never been a change in your life, my friend. You may have even said a prayer. You may have even walked down an aisle, but you know you've truly never been born again. You've never been saved. Get a good look at the fire. Amen. Get a good look. I'm sad to say that's what's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. You know, the funny thing about it, like when I first tried to put that out, you want to try to put the flames out when you're in hell. You won't be able to put them out. Boy, you'll scream and cry and say, man, listen, when can I get out of here? Oh, you say, oh, but preacher, I don't believe in hell. That's okay, you don't have to. Because you will. Philippians chapter 2, the Bible says, One day every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And Luke 16, listen, my, my friend, that rich man, I don't know if he believed in hell before he died, but I know he believes in hell now that he's in hell. According to Luke 16, the Bible says in hell, he lift up his eyes, being in torments. And listen, my friend, just like years ago, old Gomer Powell, listen, some people that don't believe in hell, one day you're going to die and you're going to hear, surprise, surprise, surprise. Hell's no joke. Hell's a real place. And listen, there's young people right now in hell burning. There's moms right now in hell burning. There are dads right now in hell burning. Listen, there's some people in hell right now who are burning and they're crying out, my friend, crying out for mercy, crying out for a drop of water, crying out for a soul winner, crying out for some help. And listen, my friend, I want to tell you something. Hell's a real place. And it's about time Christians started believing in hell and started, listen, my friend, started getting off the blessed assurance and got busy for God. I'm so glad. February 14, 1976, some soul winners came by. And in essence, they told me the word of God. Told me from the Bible I was a sinner on my way to hell. Jesus died and was buried. And three days later rose again. And thank God, Amen. I got saved. Amen. Amen. Tom Gray laid down on the barroom floor. Having drunk so much he can drink no more. So he fell asleep with a troubled brain. Having dreamed that he rode the hellbound train. The engine with blood was red and damp. And brilliantly lit by a brimstone lamp. An imp for few was shoveling bones. And the furnace ran with a thousand groans. The engine was filled with all type of beer. And the devil himself was an engineer. The passengers made such a motley crew. Church member, atheist, Gentile Jew. Rich men in broadcloth and beggars in rags. Handsome young men in withered old hags. Yellow and black men, red, brown and white. All chained together with a horrible sight and while that train dashed on with his awful pace and a hot wind scorched him on hands legs and face wilder and wilder the country grew and hotter and hotter the flames became until their clothes were burned with each flithering flame and then in distance arose such a yell ha ha croaked the devil we're near in hell and oh how the passengers shirked with pain and begged of the devil to stop the train but he capered about and sang with glee he laughed he mocked with their agony my faithful friends you've done my work and the devil can never a payday shirk you bullied the weak you Rob the poor and a starving brother you've turned from your door. You've paid full fare, so I'll carry you there. For it's only right you should get your share. While the laborer always expects his hire, I'll land you safe in a lake of fire where your flesh shall roast with the flames that roar. And you'll be tormented more and more. And then Tom awoke with an agonizing cry, his clothes soaked with sweat and his hair standing high. And he prayed as he never prayed before to be saved from drink and from the devil's power. And his prayers... And his cries were not made in vain, for he never more rode that hellbound train. And I'm so glad when I got saved, Jesus stopped that hellbound train. <laughs> and got me off the hellbound train. Thank God, in essence, the flames of hell, when I got saved that day, the flames of hell, my friend, in my soul were stomped out by the blood of Jesus Christ, and now I'm no longer on my way to hell. I'm on my way to heaven. Glory to God. Thank God 
There's only one good thing I know about hell. Not one single person has to go there. Because Jesus Christ died on the cross. And three days later, after they put him in the grave, he rose again. And now his blood is powerful enough to wash away every sin. His blood is powerful enough to save and change your life. And young person, how in the world could you sit through a youth conference like this and not be born again? You heard it in the service last night. You heard it in the service before. And some of you still are not saved. But listen, I'm not primarily concerned just with those who are not saved. I'm more concerned with those of you who are saved and never pass out a gospel track. I'm concerned with those of you who are saved and never go on teenage soul winning. You never work on a bus route. You don't do anything to get the gospel. I'm saying, young person, stand up for Jesus and get on fire for God and do something for Jesus. In case you can't figure it out, this is not what I was planning on preaching. I, my Bible's up there with my outline in it. I couldn't put the fire out and I think the Holy Ghost said, son, just preach on the fire. Y'all don't mind the Holy Ghost kicking in, do you? I preached at church one time. I said it'd be good if God came in and messed our service up, wouldn't it? We ought to have a plan, but sometimes the Holy Ghost don't go by our plan. He's got his own plan. Last year in this youth conference, a young man came forward, and I don't mean to embarrass him, but I remember I prayed with him on the altar here. He said, Preacher, he said, Preacher, what can I do for my dad? He said, My dad's in hell. And I said, Well, how do you know? And he basically explained that he got saved and the Holy Spirit convicted him, and he'd go forward and get on the altar and say, God, I'm going to witness to my dad. And he said, He chickened out. And one day his dad died. And he said, and so my dad's in hell. I said, first of all, hopefully, hopefully maybe somebody else talked to him. But if not, if not, turn to Luke 16. Let me show you something. Somebody got a Bible down here. Open up Luke 16 real quick. I said, if there's one thing you can do for your dad, I'm going to close here. Just one thing you can do for your dad, if he is in hell, and I hope he's not, Luke 16, that rich man was in hell. When he realized he couldn't get out, when he realized there was no mercy, he finally said, verse 27, then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou would send him to my father's house. Verse 28, for I have five brethren that he may testify to them, lest they also come into this place of torment. He says, okay, look. He said, man, I'll probably people believe there's a party in hell. Man, if there's a party in hell, if you can go to hell and have a good time, why didn't this guy say, hey, tell my five brothers to hurry up and come on, man. I'm having a good time. No, that's not what he said. He said, listen, if I can't get out of here, if I can't have me one drop of water, then by God's grace, I don't want my five brothers to come here. Please send Lazarus from the grave. Give me a soul winner that'll go talk to my brothers. I don't want them to come to hell. Some of you are saved, and you know you have blessed assurance. But thank God I don't sing the song, You Must Be Born Again and Again and Again and Again. Amen? Man, when I got saved 20 years ago, thank God I'm still saved. Amen. You say, you've been holding out all that time? Uh-uh, he's been holding on to me. Amen? Amen. In fact, matter, I got a sermon called, My Faith May Fail, But His Grip Won't Slip. Amen? <laughs> Hello. Man, he's holding on to me. Wait a minute, though. But some of you are secure, and you know it. The only problem is you're so secure, you're sitting. And you're not doing a thing for God. Listen, right now, listen, some of you are so busy, you didn't even spend time to pray today, but somebody in hell's praying right now. Praying for me to preach to the point that you'll be a soul winner. Praying that you'll go to their house and witness to their five brothers or their two sisters or their mom or their brother or their niece or their son or their daughter. There's somebody in hell. Listen, my friend, they're praying for you, young person, to get on fire this week. They're praying for you to get on fire and go home a soul winner. Praying for you, young men, to surrender your life to preach the ministry. Praying for some of you, you young ladies, to surrender to be a missionary. Praying for some of you to become a full-time Christian servant, maybe to teach in a Christian school praying for you to give your all to God because you're the only hope people in hell have because they can't get out but they don't want anybody else coming in and where are you probably sitting in the balcony I don't know in the back I don't know but some young man maybe several young men you sat in a missions conference and a preacher and the missionary preached and taught and gave the invitation and the Holy Spirit 
started tugging at your heart and said, you ought to surrender. And you said, but man, I always wanted to drive a BMW. I always wanted to have me a Jaguar. I always wanted to have me in my own condominium. And, and, and I don't think I could do that being a missionary. What's it going to matter? A hundred years from now. Well, see, I, if I surrender my life, I might have to go to Bible college and well, it's not accredited. And, and I've always wanted to be the next Michael Jordan. I said, well, I think he's a good basketball player. I just think he needs to get that sissy earring out of his ear. Hello. But what would it matter? I'm just saying this. The chef of you for one thing, you need to start passing out gospel tracts. You need to start showing up for soul winning. You need to start, listen, my friend, as you go to the, listen, when you go get gas in your vehicle, you ought to pass out a gospel track. When you, you know, some of you, even in the motels and, and different places, you've had opportunity to witness and you let it go by. Listen, people dying and going to hell. And we've convened here to have a great youth conference and we're having a great time and that's fine. But somebody that we meet, my friend, who's not saved, they might be having a good time now, but they're not going to have a good time in hell. And I'm saying it's about time we realize, listen, it's about time some of you young men, you've already felt the call of God on your life. Why don't you surrender and say, listen, I really believe in hell. I'm giving my life to help and to propagate the gospel I don't want people to go to hell I want people to get saved and learn how to have the abundant life why don't some of you young ladies say okay I'm not going to live for my own life I'll surrender my life to be a missionary if that's what God wants I'll marry a preacher if that's what God wants I'll marry an evangelist if that's what God wants I'll surrender my life to serve God some of you young men God's called you and said listen I want you to be an evangelist and crisscross this country and preach the gospel you said man I don't want to live that way oh won't you surrender somebody's in hell somebody's praying for you to surrender. Oh, somebody else in here listen, the devil, my friend, the devil wants everybody to go to hell with him. By the way, he's not going to be in charge of hell. He's going to be burning like everybody else, but he wants to try to get as many people going to hell, and we ought to by the grace of God get as many people that we can tell them the gospel, tell them how to be saved, and when the Holy Spirit convicts them and they repent, he'll save them and take them to heaven. Because anybody that goes to hell is an intruder because hell was made for the devil and his angels and not for mankind. And Jesus gave his life so that you can be saved. And he rose again so those of us who are saved, by the way, can live the resurrected life. Listen, it's about time. Some of you young people stop playing church. There's a fire burning. There's a fire that's burning. Ezekiel 33, 8, If thou dost not speak the one of wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. My friend, I stand in judgment now and feel that you're the blame somehow. On earth I walk with you day by day and never did you point the way. You knew the Lord in truth and glory, but never did you tell the story. My knowledge then was very dim. You could have led me safe to him. And though we live together on the earth, you, you never told me of the second birth. We walk by day and talk by night, and yet you show me not delight. You let me live and love and die. You, you knew I'd never live on high. Yes, I called you friend in life and trusted you through joy and strife. And yet on coming to the end, I cannot now call you my friend. Now I close with this illustration of a man. True story. He was driving down the highway and a man in the middle of the highway, jumping up and down, screaming. He's about to cross a bridge. The man's jumping. Stop! Stop! The guy stopped his car. He said, crazy fool, what are you doing out here? Another man came up from the side. He said, sir, we were on a Greyhound bus. And we were about to cross the bridge here. And he said, the man obviously in charge didn't see and didn't pull up the bridge in time. And a tugboat came through and took out part of the bridge. And we were on a Greyhound bus. And we went over. And he said, and this man and I decided to crawl up here and try to warn anybody else before it's too late. He said, so in essence, sir, this man saved your life. And this man said, until the police came for the rest of the night, he got out in that highway jumping and screaming, stop, stop, stop. And he said, some people, some people would just pull right around him and plunge to their death. But others, <laughs> stop the car. And he was able to explain, the bridge is out. The bridge is out. You're headed for destruction. And that's all I've done. 
I started preaching when I was 16 years of age for these last just about 18 years. I've just been going all over the country saying, stop. 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 And some people look at me like I'm crazy. And some people say, man, why is he yelling and scream? Because the bridge is out. You're on your way to hell. Stop. 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 But I need some help. Will you help me, young person? Will you help me, young person? Will you help me by the grace of God to try to do what we can to see as many people saved? Let's all stand to our feet, please. Every head is bowed, every eye is closed. Every head bowed, every eye closed, please. I wonder, first of all, as our heads are bowed, eyes are closed, I wonder how many here say, preacher, I'll be honest, before God, I've heard the preaching. I've had fun. I've been through the sessions, but I'll be honest, if I died, if I died right now, I am not 100% sure I'd go to heaven. But preacher, I am 100% sure I do not want to go to hell. I'm, I'm positive about that. As our heads are bowed and eyes are closed, who'll say, preacher, I'm positive I don't want to go to hell. I'm not sure I'm going to heaven, but I'm sure I don't want to go to hell. Preacher, please, I need to be saved. I need to be born again. I want my life to count for God, but I need to be saved first. Preacher, pray for me. Preacher, please, please. I need to be saved. As our heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Quickly, right now, wherever you are, raise your hand up high. I want to pray for you. Say, I'm not sure I'm saved still. Would you raise your hand, anybody? Raise it up high. Let me see it. Way up the balcony. I see you. God bless you. Yes. Who else? Just slip it up high. Say, preacher, I'm not sure I'm saved. Just raise it up high. Let me see it. I'll, I'll pray for you. Anybody else? God bless you, young lady. Yes. In the back. Yes, I see your hand. Yes, I see your hand back there. God bless you. Anybody else? Raise it up high. Okay, back there. Yes, I see your hand. God bless you. Who else? In the balcony. Anybody at all? Just raise your hand up high. Let me see it. I promise. I'll pray for you. Anybody else? Say, preacher, I'm not sure I'm saved. Okay, is there anybody else on the bottom floor before I pray? Anybody else? Say, preach. Okay, I see your hand over here. God bless you. Yes. Is there anybody else? Quickly. Anybody else? Anybody else? In just a minute, the piano's going to play, rescue the perishing, care for the dying. I'm going to pray first, though. Father, be with every hand that was raised. And God, I pray that these would come in just a minute and get saved. Oh, God, please let them come. And Lord, I pray that you'll bring them to a place of repentance, give them faith to trust Christ as Savior. And God, may they be born again today before it's too late. Please, dear God. I beg you, please. Now as our heads are bowed, eyes are closed. I wonder how many of you will say, Preacher, God spoke to my heart. And I'm not the soul winner I ought to be. Or maybe, you know, God's called me to preach. Or God's called me to the mission field. Or, and we know God doesn't call young ladies to preach. But if you're a young man, you say, God's called me to preach. Or you're a young lady, God's called me to be a missionary. God's called me to the mission field. And I've never surrendered. I need to do it now. And I understand everybody can't be in full-time Christian service. But everybody can be a full-time Christian. I said, I don't believe in mama called, papa called preachers. I don't believe in college called preachers. I don't believe in preacher called preachers. I believe in God called. But when God calls, you need to surrender. Perhaps some of you have never surrendered. Perhaps some of you, my friend, you used to be a soul winner. You used to be on fire and you slacked off. Maybe you got a friend. Maybe you got a dad. Maybe you got a brother. Maybe you've got a sister. You're not sure they're saved. Listen, my friend, you, maybe you've tried to witness to them. And I know sometimes, boy, you try and they, they, they tell you, listen, just leave me alone. Don't give up on them. Who will say, preacher, the message spoke to my heart. God spoke to me. I need to do something about it. Either I need to get right with God. I need to surrender my life. Whatever. Preacher, God spoke to me. Pray with me. I need to make a decision. I wonder how many like that. Raise your hand up high. Let me see it all over. Anybody? All righty. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. All righty. Thank you. Now, Lord, I pray you'll be at these or raise their hands and help them in the few moments we have to make a difference, to surrender for whatever you call them to do. Please, in Jesus' name. And just a minute, I'm going to point to the pianist. And when I do, she's going to play. If you're not sure you're saved, I want you, first of all, to run down these aisles. Here's what I want you to do. Brother Steve is going to be standing right here. And I want you to come up and say, Brother Steve, I want somebody to take the Bible and show me how to be saved. We'll get somebody to take you off to the side here, show you how to be saved. So right now, if you're not sure you're saved, right now, would you come? And wherever you, from the balcony, wherever you are, you raised your hand. I prayed for you. Come to Brother Steve or a uh, brother here. One of these, come on up, and we'll take the Bible and show you how to be saved. If you are a Christian, you just want to come and pray, or maybe you want, might want somebody to pray with you in just a minute. I want you to come but the first stanza is for those who need to be saved I want you to come and on the second stanza you Christians can come if you like to so as she plays you're not sure you say will you come right now from the balcony from the back some of you back here raise your hands over here you raise your hand will you come amen God bless you from the balcony where you at you raise your hand said I'm not sure I'm saved will you come come on come on Billy Sunday said going inside of a garage won't make you a car and going inside of a church won't make you a Christian and going to youth conference won't make you a Christian either 
being born in the preacher's home is great, but that won't make you a Christian. And the tragedy of tragedy, some of you good young people, but you've never been saved. Would you come right now? Hurry, will you come? Will you come? Oh, you say, well, my friends will laugh at me. Oh, no. If your friends are really saved, they'll say, thank God. They'll say, thank God. And God knows I wouldn't want to try to cause anybody doubt to salvation. But listen, I wouldn't want you to have assurance of something you do not have. Who, anybody else? If you need to be saved, sit from your seat and come. Sit from your seat and come. And then I'm going to ask those of you who are saved, let's be honest. We've kind of slacked off a little. It's about time we got on fire. It's about time our hearts burned again for lost people. It's about time, hey, thank God for Brother Hovind. Listen, my friend, he, uh, he's doing what he can for God and going around doing the thing. Listen, I'm different than he, man. I, I, I'm not an intellectual like he, but I can break a few bricks and lay on nails and, and uh, cause a lot of noise and trouble and, and get people's attention. Then tell them about Jesus. And you might not be able to do what I can do, but you can do something for God. Right now, as the piano plays, you Christians, come get right with God. Come ask God to burden your heart. Come surrender to the Spirit of God. Whatever it is he says, you come right now. Some of you got lost loved ones who are going to die and go to hell. Won't you come and pray for them by name? Pray for your dad. Pray for your mom. Pray for your sister. Pray for your uncle. Pray for your niece. Your no hey, come pray. Some of you got maybe a son or daughter who's lost. You come. Hey, some of you got young people in your youth group are lost. Come as far as you can and just get on your knees wherever you are. Listen, my friend, and beg God. Listen, my friend, the flames in hell, this flame is out but the flame in hell still burning still burning the man in hell is praying for you young person to come forward and not just come forward but get up off your knees and do something about it he's praying for you praying for you to be a soul winner praying for you and I told that young man I said young man only one thing you can do for your dad if he's in hell you can witness to those who have not yet gone to hell and tell them the good news I want us to turn in our songbook. Do you know what page that is, my brother? And I want you to help us to sing that.